Alright everyone, hello! What is up? The Logodators here and welcome back to another episode of KSP Conquest. Today we are in the vehicle assembly building, building a very important vehicle. We are going to send this thing into space. What is it? Well, it is our first space station. We're calling it Space Baza 1. Baza is Russian for base and uh, space is space, so that's why we got that name. However, we need to make a crew transport vehicle to bring crew up to the station and to do that we need some more science to unlock valuable parts to get that science we're going to minmus yet again all right here we are on the launch pad with minmus explorer 4 this is going to be the fourth mission to minmus to land and plant a flag and complete a contract and uh, we're gonna get some money from that carlo kerman is going to command the mission and she actually is the first gerbil knot to ever be launched into space or on a designated mission that is not an orange suit. So Carlo Kerman, the first Kerbal Knight that isn't Jet Bill, Bob, or Val. So uh, kind of a first right there. But anyways, let's get ourselves to Minmus in three, two, one. Minmus Explorer 4 is on its way. You've already seen the launch profile of this mission three other times, so I'm gonna speed through this as fast as I can so we can get some to some really exciting stuff in the uh, future parts of this episode because we do do a lot of really cool stuff Anyways, uh, we ditched the first stage and the fairing the first stage is hopefully going to land on the ocean And we're going to push on to orbit with that second stage and that's also going to give us enough fuel to get uh, Most of the way to Minmus. However, we have a pretty shallow trajectory and we lose contact with the first stage and it burns up in the atmosphere before we can do anything So we do lose a bit of bit a uh, bit of money from that. So that's unfortunate However, it's not a deal breaker. We are still going to get a lot of money from this mission because uh, planting a flag on Minmus is quite lucrative. Anyways, we go in for a nice docking and uh, plan our maneuver to burn our way to Minmus. That uh, docking was a little challenging because, again, no SAS, but it, uh, it all worked out. Uh, here we are at Minmus, arriving there about eight days later and uh, just getting our capture burn. We have a pretty high orbit this time, but... Um, Nothing changes, and we just get a nice glimpse of the craft as it floats away, and we begin our landing burn. I burn a little too late here again, and I almost end this mission in disaster, but luckily it was basically a suicide burn, and I was able to pitch up just in time and uh, land the craft. That low TWR is going to get one of my Kerbal Knots killed one of these days. It is risky business flying this lander, but uh, we got down to the surface, and... Uh, we do do a short hop, but we already got science from the other biome, so uh, that doesn't uh, count as for more science, so kind of a waste of a hop, but this thing has plenty of Delta V to complete its mission. We got the science from the lesser flat this time too, so uh, mark that biome down, more science, awesome. And we're going to be able to put that science towards a crew return vessel for our new station that we're about to launch into low carbon orbit. And speaking of that station, let's actually go to the launch pad and launch that thing into space. All right, here we are on the launch pad with Space Baza 1. This is going to be our first space station in low carbon orbit. Baza is the uh, Russian word for base. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, call me out if, I, uh, if I'm not pronouncing that right in the comments. Please do that. But uh, anyways, we're gonna launch that, recover the first stage and the second stage, hopefully. Unfortunately, we didn't recover the first stage on the Minmus Exploration Mission 4, so I'm hopefully hopefully gonna make up for that by recovering this stage and getting those uh, extra curb bucks, but we're gonna have to find out if that's gonna be the case in three, two, one. And Space Baza 1 is in the air. Liftoff goes smooth. We're gonna skip through most of this, but uh, yeah, we just accelerate up and out of the atmosphere, and we're gonna put this station at a 100 kilometer circular-ish orbit. And uh, yeah, there you go, there's the first stage going. The fairings uh, jettison nicely, and we're able to get up into orbit without any problems. That second stage has more than enough Delta V. We're gonna go and try and recover it later, just as well as we do with this first stage. That landing goes without a hitch. So there we go, station deployed in the proper orbit, and we're now going to burn down to the surface here and uh, just re-enter the atmosphere. Yeah, burning retrograde and uh, Embracing the heating of the atmosphere as we hopefully land really close to the KSC. I check the map a few times to make sure my course is right. I uh, adjust my heading by burning the engine slightly. And we're able to get relatively close, close to the KSC, about uh, two kilometers away, I'd say. So, uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, pretty good landing. We have those drogue chutes deploy. 
and uh, the main chute, so awesome there. However, I didn't back it up parachute, so my engines weren't powerful enough, so bye-bye spacecraft. There we go. We're gonna have to learn from that um, next time we attempt to land the second stage. But stage, uh, but the station is deployed, so that is all nice. Here's Minimus Exploration uh, 4 mission coming in for its re-entry, so we can get its bounty of science from Minimus, and we can uh, put that towards our new secret crew vehicle that I'm really excited to show here in a few seconds. But uh, yeah, there it goes. Shoots deploy. We're coming down to the surface, and uh, all is good. And we just put these the science towards a few new nodes, including uh, a station lab, which is going to generate a lot of science when we get that up and running. But I think it's time that I unveil my secret space crew transport system. All right, here we are on the launch pad with a secret design. This is the space shuttle that we're going to be using to take crew on up to our space stations and rescue our Kerbals as well. We did this because we can't really take up more than one Kerbal with the uh, 1.25 meter parts that we have available to us. So we're just going to uh, have to use the space shuttle system, which has the crew cabin and the cockpit back here to get three Kerbals into orbit and hopefully very efficiently. I'm having this whole thing be an SSTO. The center tank, uh, we ditch the center tank, that thing flies back into the atmosphere and recovers, and then the orbital, uh, the orbital section will be recovered later. So this is 100% reusable. Hopefully it'll work. I'm really bad when it comes to designing these things, so we'll have to see. Uh, let's just time warp to an orbit suitable to get under Space Baza 1, which is actually right now. So we are on time. Uh, this is unmanned. We have a probe attached to the docking port at the bottom, so, um... It is not going to do much in orbit. Uh, just kind of rendezvous with the space station, see how everything is, and uh, then get out of there. So that's the plan for today. Anyways, let's get this bird in the air in three, two, one. And we're tilting forward, but we are off. There we go. The space crew system is in the air. And here we are lifting off the pad. This historical launch of the first ever space shuttle mission doesn't carry a crew. Because, to be honest, I thought this mission was going to fail right off the bat. So, uh, just slapped a probe on the bottom and it's ready to go. We have a very steep trajectory, but, um, all ends up being okay. We just burn laterally to get some more horizontal velocity as we, uh, push ourselves into orbit. We have to disable the, one of the main engines, the skipper on the bottom there, so we can maintain control and stability. So we're just running by the two swivels and the thuds. And uh, yeah, that just skipper would throw us way off balance, but uh, we don't need it anymore So we're just gonna decouple the tank and uh, Head off into orbit with the OMS or the orbital maneuvering system Directly on the shuttle when we decouple the state uh, the tank I expected it to have an antenna, but it did not so we have all the equipment and everything, but we don't have any um, communications array to actually communicate with anything so this is basically flying blind. However, I always arm my parachutes when I stage, so my parachutes will deploy anyway, so that is good at least. So our drogue chutes do end up going, and our uh, main chutes uh, fire shortly thereafter. And I actually put enough parachutes on this so it can actually slow down and make a gentle landing all on its own, so we don't need any fuel whatsoever to land the fuel tank, and that is awesome. We landed on the ocean, and then it falls over when we lose some expensive hardware, but that is fine. We recovered the engines, and that's the most expensive part. However, we do rendezvous with the station just after we recover the uh, booster, and uh, just do some station keeping. Mission Control says everything is nominal, all looks good, and we rendezvous with the station right over the KSC. So, a beautiful rendezvous. Mission goes smoothly. And then we just uh, re-enter the atmosphere and uh, head back to the KSC. Re-entry with this thing was uh, kind of unstable, but this craft really wants to fly straight. So, you know, it was pretty good, to, pretty easy to recover the craft after a while. So at least there was that. We do do some spinning and uh, we do spin out a little bit, but it ends up being good because we lose so much velocity that it just... Uh, uh, slows our descent uh, to the way we like it. So there we go We're just gonna try and burn our way back to the KSC get as close as possible We do run out of fuel, but uh, this thing is designed to land on parachutes right now anyway because we don't have the landing gear uh, Unlocked yet. We're still researching it. So uh, once we get that unlocked, we'll slap it on. But anyways Successful test flight. I think it's time to actually put some crew inside of the SCS shuttle Alright, here we are with SCS 2 the first Kerbald mission 
with the space shuttle. I was gonna say manned mission, but uh, they're Kerbal, so Kerbal mission. Anyways, we're gonna take SES-2 up to the Bosnia space station, or Space Basel-1, and uh, go and dock it and complete the orbital docking contract that we have, and they'll just give us uh, some pocket change, so that'll be nice. We got Jebediah piloting the thing and Bill Kerman along for the experience, so uh, let's get this thing in the air in three, two, one, and a liftoff. SCS-2 is in the air and accelerating towards orbit and uh, just pushing its way out of the atmosphere again. We get some nice internal views of the cockpit. The, we haven't actually taken out this cockpit before, I don't think. Uh, no, no, we did play a little rocket plane in episode 2 and we used the same cockpit there. So uh, other than that, this cockpit hasn't been used very much, but uh, it's going from rocket plane to uh, space shuttle. So kind of a big change there, but you know, it works. It's able to withstand the temperature of uh, low orbit re-entry, so it's all fine. Anyways, we push our way into orbit rather efficiently this time, and uh, we made a few changes to the craft as well. We added some more RCS thrusters, and we actually added an antenna to the uh, fuel tank here, which is about to make its landing, so we flip it around and uh, brace for re-entry. I uh, try and go at an angle here for re-entry so we can just mitigate the heating effects, and uh, this tank does get pretty close to overheating and blowing up during re-entry. That skipper engine uh, almost blows up, but um, you know, it's fine. It can do its thing. So uh, we do end up safely making it back to the oceans of Kerbin and landing it rather successfully. So successful recovery, more funds in the bank. Our spaceship uh, or space shuttle rendezvous with the station very, very shortly and uh, is able to make a successful docking. Unfortunately, it's at the dark side of Kerbin, however, it is almost sunrise, so uh, we were able to, um, you know, get a nice, beautiful view of the space uh, station and the space shuttle docked. The space shuttle is the docking port at the rear, just because it's easier that way, and we don't have the inline docking port anyway. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to transfer a bill on over to the space station. We're actually going to leave him in orbit, so that way when we bring a full crew of three up with the next shuttle, we can complete the contract of uh, the next station, which requires you to uh, have four Kerbals on the station for four days, so there you go. The basis and stations contract pack is a little buggy, but, um, you know, I was able to uh, accept the contract even though it was kind of flashing in and out of existence, but, uh, you know, it worked out. I'm sure the developer will have an update very soon and he'll uh, fix all of that, um, but, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways, we get pretty close to the KSC and we land on parachutes just off the shore. However, when I land, I'm going to slow this down to real speed. Um, I do a belly flop and then the game thinks for a minute before shooting jab at like Mach 3 just straight out of the ocean. And the only thing left is the cockpit. So good thing we left Bill in orbit because <laughs> he would have died. So um, yeah, that's not fun. Anyways, uh, we kind of have fun with the uh, reaction wheels of the cockpit and uh, promptly get Jeb the heck out of there. Normally, I don't like using the EVA chutes, but um, I think it's safe to say that it's uh, fair to use here. So we're going to deploy that chute and get on down to the KSC and recover Jeb. No Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video, and hopefully it won't harm any Kerbals in the near future at all. That's the plan. Anyways, let's go on to the next space shuttle launch, which is going to bring a full crew up to the space station. All right, here we are on the pad with SCS-3. It's going to go to the space station and... Uh, get all the crew we need up there to complete our contract. It's gonna have four Kerbals up there because we already have uh, our engineer, Bob. Uh, no, Bill, Bill the engineer, not Bob. Bob's the scientist. And uh, yeah, so yeah, let's go do it. We're gonna launch this thing in three, two, one. And we are on our way. Just after three launches, the launch of this space shuttle is becoming almost routine. It's still a lot of fun to fly. It's not as much as a challenge as I thought it was to fly this craft up into orbit. It's pretty standard. The only thing you have to do that's different on most launches is you have to turn off that skipper engine when it drains most of the fuel out of that uh, middle uh, fuel tank because uh, that plane really weighs it down and just having that extra booster at the bottom uh, just makes it a little bit um, more unstable than it really needs to be, so you have to turn it off. Unfortunately, when we recover this, all the chutes break off because I think it was Time Warp that did it, so next time I'm not going to use Time Warp when I'm deploying the parachutes and hopefully it's going to... Um, make it survive next time because uh, we lost a bit of funds, unfortunately. However, we rendezvous with the station and go in for a nice and easy docking. We have four Kerbals on the station now, so we're going to be able to complete this contract 
that we have all we have to do is just leave it up in orbit for two days and we will be good so uh two days later we do get the contract and it is going to be time to depart from the space station so uh we're only gonna send uh val back no no we're gonna send all three crew members back but we're gonna rotate bill out for um one of the scientists grocery Kerman, i believe we're set, uh leaving up there so yeah he's just gonna yeah, chill on up there with his nice moustache. <laughs> Anyways, we're coming back into the atmosphere. The best thing to do to slow this thing down is just to throw it around and make it spin out, and it bleeds off enough velocity that's really easy to recover as well. And uh, we attach landing gear this time. It is at a bit of a precarious angle, so it's going to be interesting to land. I thought I was going to land on parachutes first, but I end up landing on wheels, and it works out. So, uh... Another successful mission. Let's go on to the last launch of the episode, though. All right, here we are on the launch pad with the last launch of the day. This is the Atlas IV rocket carrying a brand new um, Earth observation equipment with it. This is a scan set part that enables me to see biomes on the planet Kerb. And so once this bad boy maps out the entire planet, we're going to be able to look at all the biomes that we can get all that juicy science from. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get this thing in the air in three, two, one. And we are up. Atlas IV is off the pad and pushing its way on into a polar orbit. We've already done these launches many a times before, so there's nothing new to see here. Uh, the spacecraft goes up and detaches, and uh, Atlas IV itself uh, continues to circularize. While the first stage goes in for a landing, we have two drug suits and two main chutes, and then the final descent will be slowed down by a little bit of fuel that we had left over. Uh, we almost ran out of fuel, but um, I catch myself and do a quick suicide burn just to use the remaining scraps of fuel that we had to land down safely. And we do recover the booster, and Atlas IV makes its way into about a 490 kilometer circular ish orbit. So, yeah, it makes it up there, and we're able to map the entire planet and get uh, some funds from that. So, that is awesome. We're going to send a couple more of these satellites too in order to uh, map, uh, du uh, not Duna, um, uh, the Mun and Minmus, so we can see the biomes that we haven't been to yet, and we can send further explorations uh, to those biomes so we can collect all the science that we can possibly get our hands on. Anyways, guys, that has been episode 8 of KSP Conquest. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss another episode of KSP Conquest ever again. And uh, with that being said, just thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.